Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My God reigns. Thank you very much, my friend, for singing the theme song and the other song. It's a pleasure to be able to be with you today and to continue on this wonderful 40 days of uh, prayer that we've been having. And yes, Sister Christel is right. When she gave me the invitation, her first statement was, you know, you can't say no to your friend. <laughs> and no, I did not say no. And then I'm happy. I'm happy to be able to be here and share God's words with each and every one of you. We've been blessed already today, and we've been blessed for the 40 days, 22, 23 days now. And God has been with us. And I have gotten a chance to uh, watch alone a few times, and I was blessed every time I turned in to hear God's word. Yes, it's hard to say no to your friends. And even the Bible says that sometimes somebody knocks at your door, even if you could not, but because if it's a friend knocking, you will get up and answer the door. So thank you so much for your ministry. Thank you, Brother Pastor, for confirming the um, invitation. He did call Pastor Pia and uh, make sure that I will be coming in. And yes, I am a good friend of the whole Presa clan, if I may say it that way. So what a blessing to be able to share God's word with you. So I'm going to now, tonight, I'm going to begin with the message entitled, Yet I Will Trust in God. Yet I Will Trust in God. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, as we come to you, we say that we come with nothing of our own. Not us, but Christ be glorified. And I pray, Lord, that you will speak yourself to your people tonight. On this moment, that it may not be, it should not be, must not be, will not be my word but it must be your word that is heard. Not I, but Christ be heard sin. Not I, but Christ. And spirit of the living God, please fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, mold me, melt me and fill me. Spirit of the living God, our God who reigns, our God who reigns, fall afresh on me. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We are on day 22 or 23. Certainly, some have had answers to their prayers already. Some may still be waiting for the prayers to be heard. The reality is that sometimes we pray and God answers right away. Other times, God has us to wait a little longer. And other times, he simply answers not the way that we expect him to. The question for us tonight, knowing that our God reigns, he's still on the throne, he rules the affairs of men, he is above heaven and earth, and yet our most powerful, all-powerful God sometimes acts in a way that is not easily understood by us. And, and this is the situation as men and women of prayers, prayer warriors, what is our reaction? What is our attitude? What should be our posture? when God does not answer exactly the way we, we wish he would answer us. You may have prayed for a Toyota, but God gave you a Cadillac or a Chevy or whatever. But that nonetheless, he answered, but this is not what you had prayed for. The question is, 
what do you do in such cases and situation and circumstances? I am here to tell you that it is at this exact moment that you and I need to remember that God still reigns. God is still on the throne. He is God. He never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It is easy to remember that God reigns when things go exactly the way we want them to go. It is easy to believe and remember that God reigns when things go smoothly. But I'm here to tell you that the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. The God of the good time is still God in the bad time. God still reigns whether or not he answers the way we wish for him to answer. There is a, a, a simple way we need to remember that. Some of us are students, some of us are parents, some of us are workers in one capacity or not. Imagine that as a student, you, you have studied for an exam, you have done the best that you can, you, you, you did your homework, you did your dutiful work, and you worked, you studied, and you prayed, and you prayed, and you prayed. You even asked the prayer warriors of your church to help you pray, and you went and took the exam, and somehow you failed the exam. Yes, sometimes you may fail an exam, even though you prepared, even though you work hard, even though you did your best. Now, what do you do in such circumstances? What do you do in such cases? You did your best. You may be a parent who, have done, who has been the best parent possible. You may have sent your children to the best schools around, best schools that money could buy, and yet they do not turn the way you expected and wanted them to turn. What do you do in these cases, in this situation? Yes, some of us, we have prayed and prayed and prayed for some people. Sometimes we pray and God answered right away. Sometimes we pray and God answered as he did for, for Daniel. The answer comes even before we get up from our knees. Sometimes right away the answer comes. And yet other times you have to, you, you prayed for one week, you prayed for two weeks, we prayed for 20 days, you prayed for 40 days, and yet it doesn't come just the way you expect expected it to come. These are exactly the times when you and I need to remember that God is God. There is no other God. God above, he is the only one who has always been and will always be God. What do you do in those cases? I remember the case, you do remember the case of, 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 of Moses, when Moses was 120 years old, at 120 years old, Moses, his life dreams had always been to take God's people into the Canaan land. He was to bring them into the promised land. And at 120 years old, God said to Moses, you will not be the one to take my people into Canaan. You will not be the one to Across the promised land. Moses prayed and asked, Moses said, God, please, that this has been the dream of my life. Give me a chance to bring them into Canaan. Give me a chance to cross the Jordan with them. And my, my, my brothers, my sisters, Moses asked, and God said, no. Moses asked again, and God said, no. And notice what happened. What happened exactly as you go to the Deuteronomy chapter 3. Deuteronomy chapter 3 verses 26 to 28 God said to Moses but because of you Moses now talking to the people Moses talking to the people of Israel and he said God said because of you no no Moses said to the people verse 26 but because of you the Lord was angry with me and will not listen to me that is enough the Lord said 
do not speak to me anymore about this matter. In other words, Moses prayed and asked. Moses prayed and asked. Moses, God said no. Moses asked again. God said no. Moses asked. And finally, God said, Moses, do not talk to me anymore about this matter. What do you do in such situations? And when God said, do not talk to me anymore about this matter, my brothers and my sisters, uh, the Bible says, God said to Moses, uh, now what is what you do? Verse, verse, uh, we now, we now in verse 27, Deuteronomy 3, verse 27, go up to top of Mount Pisgah and look west and north and south and east. Look at the land with your own eyes, since you are not going to cross the Jordan. But commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, for he will lead this people across and will cause them to inherit the land. Notice two, two, three things at least here. Number one, God said to Moses, you will not cross. Uh, speak to me no more about this matter. Number two, God said to Moses, you are to take Joshua and commission him. He will take the people into the promised land. And number three, God said to Moses, not only will you take Joshua, but you will strengthen Joshua. You will encourage Joshua. You will help him so he will succeed in the commission that I am given him. My brothers and my sisters, the first principle that you and I need to realize here is that when God, for some reason, does not answer you exactly the way you wanted him to answer you, what you do, it's not to stop trusting in God. You find somebody else who to encourage and to strengthen Find someone who is in need. Find someone sometimes, sometimes maybe not in your church. Sometimes there is a nominating committees that happens in churches. And you, a department may, may go from one person to another person. One person may replace you in the position that you were at the year before. Instead of being gripeful and griping and hoping that that person will fail, what you ought to do is to encourage the person, strengthen the person. And then the, in general, when you're not feeling well, when you're feeling that things are not going the way you will want them to do, the best thing to do is not to be discouraging for other people. The best thing to do is to find someone, encourage someone, encourage someone, strengthen someone, and you in turn will be strengthened and encourage, encourage somebody, encourage someone. And as you encourage people, God himself will act on your behalf. Your countenance will change. Your fortunes will change. You will be better off because you help somebody else. As the song says, if I could help somebody as I pass that way, then my living shall not be in vain. Find someone in need. Help that person in need. Find someone who, needs, who is discouraged and encourage that person. Strengthen that person. It was a sad time for Moses. It was a very sad time for the whole people of Israel. But God said, Moses, uh, stop this, the pity party. Stop the pity party. Find someone. Encourage someone. More commission someone. Help somebody. And that's how he started to find his purpose at the time when God said no to something he really wanted. So how are you discouraged? Are you disappointed? Is there something that you're waiting on the Lord that you have not received yet? My brothers and my sisters, find someone to encourage Find someone and remind that person that God is still on the throne. God still reigns. What happens? As you encourage the other person, you yourself will be encouraged. 
And when we go to Deuteronomy chapter 31, uh, we see exactly how Moses dealt with it. Uh, Moses went on and it continued. What did Moses do? Deuteronomy 31. Uh, in verse 3, we find that Moses reminded the people of what God did. He told them, God will be with you. God will go with you. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And number three, he reminded the people in verse four of the power and the promises of God. As you go through these 40 days, uh, you are to claim the power of God, claim the promises of God. Uh, remember that the God of yesterday is still the God today. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's still on the throne. He never changes. He is a God. He is God. He is God when you're young. He is God when you're mid-age. He is God when you're old. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That is his promise. So now, so, he, so what you do when the situation is untenable, it looks like you cannot hold anymore. It looks like you can't take it anymore. It looks like you cannot hang it on there anymore. It is just at that time that you need to trust the Lord. And remember that God reigns. And remember that God is still on the throne. I remember going to visit someone. So someone who had uh, actually stage four cancer, breast cancer. She works in our office and had stage four cancer. And then I had to go visit that person. I remember telling myself, God, what am I going to say? She's such a good person. She's such a wonderful person. I was not happy with God that that person had to reach out to have breast cancer. She was always smiling. She was always singing. She always had a good smile on her face. She was a positive person. Somehow she was hit with breast cancer. And I had to leave the office and I had to go visit her. And I was preparing to go visit her. I was telling myself, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? How in the world am I going to be able to encourage her? I could not think of the words, but God said, go. And I had to go. I went with someone else. And as we were walking up to her house, she opened up the wide, the, the, her front door. She was sick now, a person who is sick, stage four cancer almost no energy. She stood up, opened her door, was open, wide open, and she had the biggest grin. Welcome! Oh my Lord, it was made so much easier for us to visit when we saw that big smile that cancer was not able to change. Cancer could not change her personality. Cancer could not change. And, and, and the fact that she was literally looking at death, staring at death in the face, that did not change who she was. That did not change her relationship with God. In fact, I was so surprised that I told her, I must tell you, I, I, I was calling here, I come in here asking myself how I was going to encourage you but you make me feel better. And he said, now, Pastor, remember, notice that. I am not, I am not in denial with this. I know my God is able to heal me from this cancer. I know God is almighty. He's the healer of his people. He may heal me from this cancer if he so chooses. But I also know that God, for his glory somehow, may choose to let me die. But yet, I will trust in God, whether I live or die, that will not change my relationship with the God who has led me throughout my life. So it is important to remember that God still reigns. When things go our way, God still reigns. When things, when we are healed immediately, God still reigns. When we have to wait, God still reigns. When we succeed with the exam, God still reigns. When everything goes well with the relationship, with your marriage, God is still on his throne. When things go bad, 
God still reigns. He doesn't change. He's the same God. And I will say it again, the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So I'm here to tell you today, remember that God, the God who's been with you when you first gave your life to Jesus, he's the same God who has led you all the way. If God had not been with you and with me, where would we have been? Where would we have been? If God had not been with his people towards this pandemic, what would we have become? But God still reigns. And as we continue, that's why the Bible says, and the Bible says that we must trust in God. You must not trust in our own self. And Moses turned around and he encouraged Joshua in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Moses said, Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified, for God will go before you. My friend, be strong, be courageous. Sir. Remind yourself. He reminded of the people of the power of God. He's the almighty God. He's water when you're thirsty. He's food when you're hungry. He's rest when you're weary. He's hope when you're dreary. He's company when you're lonely. He's a lawyer for you in the courtroom. He's a doctor in the sick room. He's wisdom in the classroom. He's strength in the weight room. He's a fence by day and the shade by night. He is your shelter in the time of storm. Yes, he's your healer in the time of a pandemic. God still reigns. And my friend, uh, one thing to remember, one thing to remember, your relationship with God must not depend on the circumstances of your life, be they good or bad, positive or negative. Whether people say good about you or talk bad about you, that must not change your relationship with God. For God is your joy. He, God is your strength. Your relationship with God must not be affected by the circumstances of life. More relationship with God must not be accepted by how many people stand with you or without you. That's why do not fear. That's why Psalm, in Psalm 27, a verse that I love very much, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You don't have to be afraid of the people. You don't have to be afraid of circumstances. You do not have to be afraid of anything or anyone. So yet again, the question when you have studied for the class, you've done your best. You've been a good parent. You've been a good student. You've been a good worker. And someone else gets a promotion somehow. You've done your best, but you don't get the best in return. What do you do? This is time when you have to trust in God. I'm reminded of Job. After he went through so much, Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in God. Trust in God, my friend. Trust God, my friend, when it doesn't make sense to you. Remember in Gethsemane, when Jesus was in Gethsemane, he was facing the cross. He could see what was coming on. Says, Father, if it be thy will, take away that cup from me. The pain was very hard, too much to bear. Take away that cup from me. He came back a second time, he prayed. Father, I know all things are possible for you. Please take away this cup from me came back a third time and prayed, Father, if it be thy will, take away that cup from me. But thank God he added, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. When, when, 
God chooses not to take the cup away from you. Trust him. Trust him. Remember that you serve the almighty God. Trust him. When you don't understand, trust God. When it doesn't make sense to you, trust God. When you don't see the end of the road, trust God. When the doctors don't have good news for you, trust God. When the nurses have done all that they could, and yet things are not going the way you want them to be going, trust God. Even if COVID-19 hit, trust God. In health, trust God. In sickness, trust God. The God of the mountain is still God in the valley. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Trust the Lord. And I think of Habakkuk in Habakkuk chapter 3, beginning with verse, uh, with, 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 with verse 17. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. Habakkuk is the book. Where, where, where he questioned, he could not understand why God uh, will, will, will see the wickedness of men and not do anything. He could not understand why God will not answer his prayers when he cried against wickedness, uh, when he cried against crime and immorality that was going in the world. Uh, Hab Habakkuk cried. And God say, Habakkuk, it will get even worse. Habakkuk asked again. God say, Habakkuk, he will get worse. And Habakkuk said in chapter two, God, no, that's not you. You will not see evil. You will not accept wickedness. God said, Habakkuk, then you should know that the just shall live by faith. In other words, trust in God. I am the God. And he says in verse 20, the Lord is in holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Sometimes uh, we have to trust God in silence. Uh, be silent before God, knowing that his reign, he is king over all. He's the king of kings uh, and the lords of lords. Uh, and Habakkuk, when it comes to chapter to chapter 3, Habakkuk now could pray, verse 3, verse 17, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The, the labor, I'll finish with this tomorrow, the, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. Yet, yet, yes, there will be no herd in the stall. Verse 18, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation, even though, even though there will be no food, no juice, no wine, no meat, nothing. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I invite you, no matter what's going on in and around you, to trust in the Lord, trust in the God who reigns, the God who has been with you. If you are still here, it's because God has been good to you. God has been good to you. Whether or not you have things the way you wanted them to be, God has been good to you. That's why you and I were still here. So let's trust God. Let's continue to trust him. Trust him, everybody trust him, for he is God and his seal reign, his seal on the throne. Whatever, be it a student listening to me, and you have not have the desired result, trust God. Parent, the child has not turned the way you wanted him or her to turn, trust God. Workers, the promotion you deserve, you have not received it. Continue to trust God. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. God with you, no matter what the circumstances, trust in God for a still the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow.
And now our Father and our God, thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for these 40 days. Thank you for the Brockton SDA Church. I thank you for the pastor. I thank you for the, the prayer ministries director and all of those who are involved in these 40 days. I praise your holy name that we can come together to the Zoom platform to worship you and be reminded of the fact that our God still reigns. Be with every single person here tonight. What one needs is different from what the other may need. But we know that you will provide for our needs. Tonight, God, we say that we will trust you. No matter what comes our way, we will trust in you. No matter what comes, what circumstances that we face, we will trust in you, God. We will continue to trust you. We trust you for you are our God. You are a king. You are a father and a friend. And you know what is best for us. Bless every single person, especially those who are in charge. Continue to bless the church and its leadership. Bring us back to this platform tomorrow. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you.